You know what's kind of neat is that I didn't have to reach way up here to pull down the microphone as um, James was here. Shauna, thank you. Oh, Aaron, where are you, Aaron? I always speak after Supervisor Hannigan at every single time. It never fails. So again, welcome to all of you, and thank you so much, Shauna, for that great introduction. You know, and I want to thank Medic. This year, I'm able to climb up the stairs without assistance like I had last year when I was wearing the cast. And thank God, Medic is up in front, just in case I stumble. They've, we've already chatted about what kind of medication I can and cannot take. So again, Medic, thank you. Thank you for all you do for our community, for our county, and... Most importantly, thank you for being our presenting sponsor for the 2020 State of the City Address. You know, I, as a disclaimer, I've had some residents ask why this event is not free and open to the general public. You know, I believe we've explained that this event is a fundraiser for the Vallejo Chamber of Commerce. The public will be able to view this presentation within 24 hours on our city's website, as well as the Chamber of Commerce website and I believe it'll be on the City TV channel, Cable Channel 28. But more importantly, it'll be free, and you can do it at home. So, wasn't that a magnificent meal? Let's give Nicole and her team from Provisions another huge round of applause. <laughs> Outstanding meal. Thank you so much, Nicole. It was delicious. So before we begin, I want to take a moment to introduce two staff members that keep the trains running and on time. Without them, Greg and I would be in total chaos. My executive assistant, Angelique Bennett. Ange, would you stand, please? And Greg's executive assistant, Michelle Straub. Michelle, where are you? There she is. Come on, Michelle. <laughs> thank you. I also want to thank the city council and the senior leadership team for their continued efforts in moving Vallejo forward. So thank you so very much. Let's give them a huge round of applause. I would also be remiss in not introducing two ladies that make sure Greg and I are doing what is best for our community, but also for ourselves. Those two ladies are our wives. My wife, Ramona, and Greg's wife, Cindy. Thank you, ladies. You keep us on the straight and narrow. <laughs> yeah, Greg, I get it. <laughs> Since our last state of the city in 2019, a lot of positive things have happened. It's about action and how action speaks louder than words. So I'm going to talk a little bit about action to show how action has affected Vallejo. And here's some of the interesting facts and figures that I've learned. I'd like you to notice that the facts I'm about to share with you are also with source information. So with that, the California State Auditor released a report in 2019 entitled Fiscal Health of California Cities. Vallejo received a moderate risk rating and ranked better than 75 California cities including, and this is really interesting, including San Diego, Sacramento, Petaluma, Oakland, Los Angeles, Monterey, Richmond, Anaheim, Riverside, Fremont, San Jose, and Modesto. And again, the source of this information comes from the California State Auditor's Office. A little bit about unemployment. The unemployment rate for Vallejo is held steady at 3.8% and is at a 25-year low. We're tracking below the state's unemployment rate, and the number of jobs in Vallejo has increased by well over 3,600 gross number of jobs with a total net of full-time employees of 1,700 since January 2017. Jobs are on the upswing as work on Mare Island has increased. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. We have a lot of representatives from Mare Island here in the audience, and I can't thank all of you for what you do for our community in employing the people of our town. Again, the source for this is the California Economic Development Department. High-paid jobs. Vallejo was ranked number six in the country for cities with the highest paid jobs by sector, and those sectors include the medical field, administrative field, and buildings and trades. 
U.S. News compiled the list of cities with the best paying jobs by examining the annual mean salary of each job included in its 2020 best job ranking list. They then tallied then which, with which cities had the most available positions associated with top paying jobs nationwide. And the source again was U.S. News and World Report. Another exciting fact is that the Vallejo Fairfield metropolitan area ranks the 17th richest in the United States in terms of median household income. And the source for that was USA Today. Quality of life. Vallejo is profiled as a model city for its bold vision, quality of life, an approach to social offerings, openness and aesthetics. The source was Front Porch Republic. Vallejo is recognized as the most diverse city in the Bay Area. And again, the source is the San Francisco Chronicle. We're receiving statewide coverage of our booming real estate market. And the source was CBS. Cal Maritime ranks number 16 in the US colleges that pay off the most. In other words, highest earning potential relative to tuition cost. Yes. <laughs> Joellen, very good. <laughs> Toronto University is increasing their enrollment and is currently developing plans for student housing and expanding programs. And the source was Shelley Berkeley, the senior provost from the college. Mare Island, one of my favorite subjects. The San Francisco Chronicle covered the Lennar Mare Island purchase by Nimitz, calling it the Bay Area Mega Project. The chief economic advisor to Governor Newsom, oh, and I understand we're in competition with him about state of the state and state of the city. Yeah, well, you all are here. So anyway, his chief economic advisor, Lenny Mendoza, visited Mare Island recently, and he visited this, the different businesses. And when he and I were speaking, he called our businesses and the way we are handling the business and the opportunity zones He's saying that we are the poster child for all of the opportunity zones in California because we're doing it right. And I want to thank Congressman Thompson for yesterday I attended an event where he spoke about opportunity zones in the federal realm. And he too said how important we are doing and how great a job we're doing in bringing opportunity zones into Vallejo. We have six. The North Bay Business Journal lists Mare Island and the millions of dollars in investments in factory OS and iMod structures as a top Bay Area economic development story in 2019. Fox News has featured stories about Mare Island Brewing. Kent was in the room. And the growing craft beverage industry in Vallejo. Again, the source was Fox News. Factory OS completed a construction project in Oakland in just 10 days and is continuing to sell their modular homes throughout the Bay Area in California. They're expanding their workforce and leasing additional Mare Island space. Southern Land Company, SLC, is now the fourth leg of the Mare Island development stool. They're joining the city of Vallejo, Nimitz Group, and HOK Architecture. They're a national real estate developer headquartered in Nashville, Tennessee, with regional offices in New York and Denver, Colorado. SLC is led by CEO and founder Tim Downey, and their holistic business model enhances results by creating unique projects with long-term viability on which investors, residents, and partners can rely. They currently have 18 projects in the pipeline valued at over $2 billion. I'd also like to give a shout out and announce today that the City Council has just given direction to the City team to begin negotiations with Holiday Development and Factory OS to bring a 130 unit mixed use residential and commercial project to our downtown. A proposal will be coming before Council and ultimately the Planning Commission for the community to be engaged in this transformative project in our historic downtown. So more on that to come. 
those facts are exciting, not only for us to recognize, but for our community to be part of and to celebrate. Sustainable economic development has been our goal for many years. And with all the challenges we've had, we're beginning to see the real development moving forward. It's not just Mare Island, but it's also the east side of Vallejo with the Cook property, Blue Rock Springs, the Solano 360 project, the fairgrounds, and other areas around Vallejo. Everything north of Vallejo is being looked at for further development. And plans are being presented to our planning and building department. This is really an exciting time for us as we're catching that economic wave. What I'd like to do now is talk about the City Council's Tier 1 priorities that were set at the 2019 goal setting session. What we wanted are, one, complete development agreements. In other words, get them done. There were so many that were out there that we looked at and said, hey, let's move this stuff forward. Let's get it done. It's part of the economic engine of Vallejo. Improve relations between our police department and the community. Streamline the development process review. Improve technology. And let's grow youth opportunities. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these individually. I'm going to chat very briefly about each one. But I'm going to talk about the departments that made them happen and what their current status is. So in other, let's start with uh, complete development agreements. The city attorney's office co-wrote the consent of transfer agreement between Lenar Mare Island and Nimitz. The CAO also authored the amended and restated exclusive negotiation agreement for Nimitz on Mare Island. Our CAO also wrote the term sheet for North Mare Island and the Nimitz Group. The negotiations are still continuing, and a finalized option agreement will be completed by the end of fiscal year 1920. The city attorney's office has reviewed and provided legal analysis for the documents associated with the Northern Waterfront Callahan entitlement process. And they've worked with the various state regulatory agencies for the approval of this project. That would be parcel A. They're involved in the ongoing negotiations with Vallejo Marine Terminal and the State Lands Commission regarding survey outlining of property ownership. Our Economic Development Division has facilitated the transfer of Lenar Mare Island properties to the Nimitz Group. They've also facilitated and supported the Nimitz Group at the completion of the Mare Island Master Plan and are negotiating the North and South Mare Island Agreements. ED is continuing to support Lenar and the U.S. Navy to complete the environmental cleanups on the remaining properties. And the next item is really huge for our community. We hope to identify and negotiate an agreement for long-term management, maintenance, and operation of the Mare Island Regional Park. We anticipate a spring 2020 reopening with the selection of a long-term management team by late 2020. So stay tuned for more on that. That is really exciting for our city. We also need to identify a marina Somebody's having a heck of a time with silverware back there. <laughs> we need to evaluate a, a marina re revitalization plan to include dredging, rehabilitation of the marina as a whole, advertising, and its occupancy. We need to continue and prepare for the central waterfront phase B garage funding using state regional me measure three funds, grants, and other federal funding. Uh, if Congressman Thompson were still here, he had to leave for another event, I'd be pointing at him and saying, uh, Congressman, yes, please. I'll be traveling to Washington, D.C. this spring as the vice chair of the Solano Transportation Agency to lobby for federal funding for these projects. A couple of weeks ago, we, the STA, lobbied the State Transportation Agency, specifically Secretary David Kim, to explore extending the smart train from Marin County to downtown Vallejo, which is a transit hub, using existing tracks that are currently here in our community. This would become part of the Capital Corridor train service. 
Secretary Kim was so interested, he's sending his vice secretary to meet with me to explore this possibility. So staff be prepared for some exciting times when it comes to transportation. We hope to improve relations between police and our community. In our police department, we hired a new police chief, Shawnee Williams, who's here in our audience this afternoon. We used a community-driven process which allowed the community input into the selection of our new chief of police. And I want to say it, was, it worked very well. We have an outstanding new chief. So welcome, Chief Williams. The chief has partnered with the Robbie Pabletti Foundation, hosting gun buybacks, doing community outreach events like late night basketball, youth reading programs, national night out, canine trials, picnic with the cops, and waterfront weekend. And one of the things that's important for transparency is that they've created a monthly at a glance of the department's operations bureau. Statistics are open to the public, and these statistics include calls for service, arrests, year-to-year -to -year comparison, and use of force incidents that are captured for public record. Our city attorney's office has been very involved with the police department. They've implemented training to educate our police department staff regarding the new laws involving transparency of police records. They've developed and presented training to the Vallejo PD command staff regarding the new use of force laws, AB 932. In our human, rela in our human resources department, we as a city has come to the realization that recruitment and retention of officers is a nationwide issue. I've spoken with mayors from around the country and have learned that we are not the only city experiencing these difficulties. Today's young people don't want to be police officers and as such, recruitment has become difficult. With that said, HR is in discussion with Chief Williams about recruiting and retention strategies. Some of the strategies that have been discussed are offering signing bonuses, offering employee referral bonuses, hiring extra help officers, reevaluating qualifications and rethinking outreach and advertising. It's safe to say that under Chief Williams' guidance, we'll be moving this police department forward. And I, Chief, I can't thank you enough for what you're doing for our community. We're also streamlining our development review process. This is something that we have heard a lot about. And I want to thank the chamber and our city manager for making this a priority. This has been an area that's been needed for many years. And through the chamber's ad hoc committee, working with the city manager, economic development, and our development services, good things have happened. In fact, the chamber recently conducted a permitting survey which found that City Hall is becoming more efficient and delivering greater customer service to the community and its development partner. One of the best things that's happened is that the stigma of not being business friendly is quickly becoming a thing of the past. And because my office is right next to uh, planning and development, I'm not getting as many people knocking on my door that are angry about the way things are going. Gillian, you and your team are doing a phenomenal job. Thank you. Our economic development division. You know, as the process evolves, ED is currently working on downtown incentive packages to develop a plan to reopen closed buildings, something that has needed to happen for many years. So I'm excited to see that moving forward. Looking at opportunity zones for Mare Island, the waterfront, historic downtown, Spiry Mills, and the old Kmart site, as well as the Northern Gateway sites. And again, like I said, I met with uh, Congressman Thompson yesterday at a round table to discuss strategies regarding what is called ozones. Economic development has initiated a fee assessment and evaluation to benchmark Vallejo's competitively with other cities. 
So the fees and so forth are going to be discussed. Our public works department is, now has a new cloud-based construction management inspection software that allows for documenting construction activities in the field and has dedicated engineering staff to attend meetings with developers to help them through the preliminary planning and permitting process. Our fire department is looking at a fire protection engineer for city hall permitting to complete that one-stop shop. And our planning and development services division has completed five phases of the zoning code and will be placed into action in September of this year. Project updates for this last year, well, last six months, 117 new projects with more than 4,000 permits issued in 2019. That's huge. That's huge. <laughs> Revenue for development projects, this is an amazing number, more than $4 million. $4 million. Building permit revenue, over $1 million. The one-stop shop I was just talking about, all departments, with the exception of fire, are in the planning development counter. Fire will soon be there. So moving to the next level, updating customer experience with an updated check-in system. Reevaluate the counter to facilitate fluidity. Developing GIS mapping for real-time information for residents and the business community. Our water department has also been involved and has added an engineering tech to the development counter. And they're participating in meetings to ensure water's key role in that process. Thank you, Mike. They also participate in the quarterly chamber meeting. The Engineering manager also participates in all economic development, meeting, economic development meetings to anticipate the needs of developers and provides leadership and coordination for citywide GIS. Improved technology. I think this one is one of our real bugaboos, but it's moving forward under the direction of Navid Ashraf. So thank you, Navid. Sadly, you know, we've had some difficulties with our entire system, and uh, it's called age, so I get that. A lot of our technology goes back over, believe this or not, three decades. Three decades. And it's been just a stopgap to keep it working. Each department has needs that far outweigh our resources. The upside of this is that the city has hired a new IT director, Mr. David Ashraf. He and his team have evaluated the systems and has invested in IT staffing to reorganize the IT division to better support the city's needs. The division's reorganization is expected to be completed by the end of this year. And Navid has identified opportunities of innovation, efficiencies, and improvements. Our immediate needs are in the public safety radio system, which will require a complete upgrade. Additionally, a new financial data system is also in the pipeline, as is the new GIS platform. These process improvements will afford better safety for our police and fire personnel, better citizen engagement tools, website enhancement, and efficiency of operation. Technology is ever-changing and quickly advancing. So for us to keep pace will be a challenge, but I firmly believe we'll keep up. One of the big things for me is growing youth opportunities. And I've always said that youth are our future. I absolutely believe in that, and therefore I encourage youth development and education at an early age. Those young people will be sitting at these tables years from now. They will be our leaders. They'll be, they'll be sitting in my chair. They'll be sitting in our, Greg's chair. They'll be sitting at the council dais. They'll be heads of our departments. And what's important is that we have new programs for our young children and that we applaud them. Man, they're having a heck of a time back there. <laughs> We must also concentrate on continuing education for those young people 
that may not be interested in pursuing a college education. I've always advocated for the Trades Academy, specifically for that reason. That said, here are a few examples of some programs that are, that are in the pipeline. Our community, community Development and Housing Division, in October of 2019, worked with uh, housing and the CMO staff, the City Manager's Office staff, to meet with the Building Industry Tech Academy to explore the Trades Academy in Vallejo. The next steps are to work with the school district and Solano Community College to assess the viability of this program. We've also partnered with, the, with Solano County and a nonprofit to apply for housing vouchers and case management service for youth exiting foster care. Our fire department has retained summer youth interns. Our human resource department has sponsored a summer internship program and signed on an MOU with Solano Community College for student interns. Our police department has two college interns working in the administrative section, evidence, crime analysis, and community service. PD has also hired seven cadets additionally since July of 2019, and they've hired a former cadet as a police officer. They've allowed cadets to provide assistance to our schools along with our school resource officers. Our Public Works Department has partnered with Solano Community College to provide internships to students in the automotive program. We've also hired a college engineering intern and are working with the Vallejo High School Engineering Academy to partner with students in the STEM program. These five items have been given top priority by staff and I'm extremely pleased with these tier one council priorities and that they are moving forward and being completed. These accomplishments go a long way of moving Vallejo forward. Now there are three other organizations that work to partner with the city in service to our community. First, Vallejo Flood and Wastewater. Under the expert guidance of Director Melissa Morton, this agency is responsible for keeping our wastewater systems working 24-7. Our ever-growing city has had its challenges with aging infrastructure, but Melissa and her team continue to make sure that our wastewater is properly treated and released. There are multiple projects and upgrades in the plant that are continually assure, that will continually assure that we stay within state and federal guidelines. I also want to add that they keep up with the many miles of canals that storm runoff goes through and keeping it clean and free of debris. It's a huge task, but Vallejo Flood and Wastewater is always on top of their game and up to the challenge. Flood and Wastewater is a critical part of our community and is doing an outstanding job. So thank you, Melissa, to you and your team. <laughs> Next is the Solano County Transit, or Soul Trans. Beth, where are you? I know you're there. There you are. <laughs> Their executive director, Beth Caranda, keeps the buses moving, so to speak. Soul Trans have been providing transportation since 2011. And before that, it was two separate transportation agencies, Vallejo Transit and Benicia Transit. And in 2011, our two communities formed a JPA, which is now Soul Trans. There have been significant changes in this agency since Beth became the executive director. They've adjusted routes for better efficiency. They've all but eliminated diesel buses, replacing them with electric and CNG vehicles. They've expanded the downtown transit hub and are preparing to break ground for the York Street extension, which will be this Monday. The bus stops are being evaluated for improvements, including shelters, comfort, lighting, and aesthetics. And now there's new technology available to assist riders with real-time information the list goes on and on. And Beth, I'm proud of you and your team for your accomplishments. So thank you so very much. <laughs> this partner has been an integral part of Vallejo community since 1944. For decades, the Greater Vallejo Recreation District has provided a multitude of activities for our community. And when I say community, it's for all of us. It's for all of us and all ages. From aquatic programs to yoga, 
to baseball, to kids' programs, dance programs, music, and outdoors, GVRD and their board and their executive director, Gabe Lanus, ensures that our 20 neighborhood parks, four community centers, and a swim complex that is now being refur refurbished are open for our residents and visitors to enjoy. I want to add that I'm in conversation with the Nimitz Group and Dave Finney about the GVRD Sports Center that's on Mare Island. We're going to be looking at alternatives for that facility and working on a solution that I hope we'll be able to announce soon. So I'm very thankful to Nimitz for looking into that for our community. So thank you, Nimitz Group. I know that I haven't covered all the providers that keep Vallejo vibrant. To all of you from the Senior Center, Meals on Wheels, private youth organizations, our many, many community volunteers, the faith community, several pastors in the room that I want to thank, Vallejo City Unified School District, our charter schools, our three colleges, and all of you that make up our network of providers, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You are all stars for our city. As excited as I was about our accomplishments for 2019, we still have issues in our community that we're concerned about. One of the biggest is our homeless and unsheltered population, which is unfortunately growing. But we've partnered with our local hospital, hospitals, Kaiser Permanente, Sutter Solano, at North Bay to build a navigation center to provide wraparound services for approximately 125 individuals. Sadly, there's a point in time count of approximately 600 plus homeless and unsheltered individuals in our community. This includes a population of homeless children that have been separated from their parents. These young people are couch surfing with their friends for day-to-day -day existence. Our housing division, thanks to Director Judy Shepard Hall, and our homeless coordinator, Rachel Frederick Vijay, are working on programs to assist this particular population. We are also looking at supportive housing projects to assist the elderly and veterans. You know, this is a national phenomenon that will not go away anytime soon, and I'm thankful that we're looking at this as a regional issue. We're also involved with other cities and counties in search of regional solutions with out-of-the-box thinking and funding. Another issue that just absolutely yanks at me is blight. As I look around our community, one of the things that I find so depressing is looking at the trash strewn about our streets and vacant lots. Is it a lack of pride, a lack of values, or a sense of entitlement that cause people to litter or dump truckloads, truckloads of trash in our alleys and back streets. A couple of years ago, one of our groundskeepers superimposed the amount of trash they collected in one calendar year. There was enough trash and garbage to cover the entire marina green up to eight feet. So I mean, that is significant. And you know, it cost hundreds of thousands to clean up and remove this unsightly blemish from Vallejo each year. And I'm thankful for our city's groundskeepers and the many volunteers that spend countless hours picking up after these thoughtless individuals that think the public streets are their personal trash can. I also want to give a shout out to our police department and our city attorney's office for investigating and prosecuting illegal dumpers. Another issue that I have is youth activity. How often have we heard from our young people, there's nothing to do here. And I think we've all heard that. Sadly, some of those young people are so bored that they've become involved in illegal activity. But I'm thankful to the various groups that recognize this problem and take the initiative to help with this challenge. From the many faith-based organizations to public and private groups, many are making a difference but as the old adage goes, it takes a village. I know I said it earlier, but our young people are our future, and it's our responsibility to, to teach them, love them, nurture them. So 
To those of you that are involved in youth mentorship, thank you so very much. Lastly, and I've said this time and time again, is image. It's a stabbing sensation when I hear Vallejo being slammed. For years, we've endured the negative image of being a gritty military town where anything goes. For some, that image still remains, and for those people, their expression of our community will always be negative. And as I said previously, we have a lot to be proud of. Yes, we've got our bumps, but we as a city have come a long way. We've turned the financial corner, and our future is now. It's today. We are a proud, diverse community with great things to offer, from our weather, to housing, to entertainment, to beautiful vistas, to our close proximity to various recreational activities, to warm and welcoming residents. We are Vallejo. To all of you in the audience, you, we, are the ambassadors for this great community that many of us live and work in. It's how we represent Vallejo that will make or break this community. Every day, each one of us, each one of us, reinforces our communities with all the positive things that we're doing and doing now. Again, it's up to us to say, we are Vallejo proud, we are Vallejo strong. With that, thank you so very much. Thank you, Mayor. City Manager Greg Nyhoff will join Mayor Sampayan on the stage here, and we will now proceed with the final portion of our program this afternoon. So this is a Q&A discussion. So the Chamber in late January conducted a survey asking our members what sort of questions they would like to have asked today. There was a series of voting, and I will have these questions in front of me in a moment. We will ask the Mayor and the City Manager to go through them. Um, on your table, you will also find question cards. If you are listening today and, and you're not hearing the questions that you want to hear answered, addressed, I encourage you to fill out these cards, leave your name and your email. These will be given to the city and they will respond to you uh, in due time. Okay, with that being said, welcome City Manager Nyhoff. Good to see you up here. Is your uh, guys' microphone working here? Thank you, sir. All right, there we go. Very good. So, Chamber of Commerce members, uh, in being surveyed about what sort of issues they would like addressed in our state of the city, really focus in on two subjects primarily, safety and economic development. So we're going to start with a question on safety that touches on the topic of both crime and business. And this is addressed to both the mayor and the city manager. They can uh, each take a, take a whack at answering this if they choose. So here's the question. Vallejo businesses both large and small, are negatively impacted by the rampant crime that is targeting businesses. It creates safety issues for both customers and employees, as well as catastrophic business losses. What is city leadership doing to mitigate this growing problem happening throughout the city? Okay, I'm gonna take a stab at that, thank you very much. Um, first of all, it isn't just about the police department preventing crime. It's about everyone becoming involved in crime prevention. It's about each resident, each business, each citizen becoming involved in crime prevention. That when you see an issue occurring, that you call the police department, you dial 911, and you keep dialing until you get a police response. Again, it's important that we all take the initiative to prevent crime. Uh, there's been some conversation about reforming the business watch program, more neighborhood watch programs with education going out to the business community and to our residents to help with this crime problem. Now again, this is not just a city of Vallejo issue. This is happening nationwide, but it's up to us as residents of this city, as business workers, as people that are involved in the Vallejo community to take the initiative in crime prevention. Greg, do you have anything you want to add? Thank you, Mayor, and, and uh, thank you all for being here for the uh, State of the City Address. It's uh, second year, it's my second year, and um, continue to get to know more of you and appreciate all of your enthusiasm about where our community is going. And I will tell you, 
um, the optimism remains high for where our community of Vallejo is going. So, you know, James, that's always a good question. We always get that question. I spent quite a bit of time this morning actually um, talking to the police chief because what we learned last year is how can we give you some concrete answers to these questions? Because you want to know what's gonna, what are you going to be able to do? What can you expect from the city? And I think uh, we've got a new police chief. I appreciate everybody welcoming him. I absolutely believe uh, he's going to do a great job for us. A lot of what he's very good at is community relations. So he started out by saying, I need to listen. I need to speak with uh, different sectors of the community, different stakeholders, and including the chamber, but different business associations to hear what are those issues that are most affecting you. So that's kind of the first step in the process. And Chief, you've been here for three months, four months? Three months. So um, I wanted to be able to just give him some time to at least learn what those issues are. So I think um, what we're doing right now is he's taking a look at the entire organization. Basically what you get and, uh, from the men and women of our police department is they're able to, to go for um, or respond to priority one calls, which in general those mean something's going on at that moment in time. There's someone called 911 to say, somebody's in my backyard, somebody's breaking into my car, there's an assault going on. And so they're not patrolling our streets, that's the majority of what they're doing. So we're, right now we're looking at some modeling for next year's budget that will look at hiring what's called community service officers. So that those officers, which are not sworn officers, are able to alleviate some of the pressure from these officers who are having to respond to all calls and be able to actually start responding to business calls, to homeowner calls, instead of uh, many stories about not getting a response or multi-hours, we'll be able to do that better. And so that's something that we're looking at right now as a department. So again, presence and actually having people respond, take your call, and then deal with the people that are actually causing the crime is something we're gonna look at. Um, I can't skirt around the issue that that's most important for me to say, and that's the fact that there aren't enough resources in the police department to attack these problems, and I'll just use yours specifically, to really get with the downtown or any business group and say, let's sit down and let's figure out a community policing program or a plan in order to do that. And so again, that's something in the horizon, but what I believe I'll be doing with the city council is recommend that we look for additional sources of, of revenue through a sales tax measure here in November. Um, we've done some polling and what we see is this community knows and understands there's needs for more policing. And what we wanna do it and do it community policing related. So that'll be a decision for council in the future. But through that, we would hope to remodel how the police department works. And that is yes, we absolutely have to, to respond to crime, but we also need to be uh, community driven. We have to be building community relations, business relations. And I will just say watch over the next six months as we unveil that plan for you with our new chief and how we're going to uh, go about doing that. Um, I think the other thing we're trying to do right now and Senator Thompson, it was or Congressman Thompson being here, is get a grant through the federal government for cops, which uh, hopefully we'll be able to apply for very soon again. Trying again to increase the number of officers that we actually have out there to serve you. So that's a, a tough one, but I think what's going to happen is, again, we'll turn into a little more, not just police sworn officers responding to calls, but community service officers where they're actually responding to businesses and community members. Mayor? Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, the Chamber of Commerce had a discussion about this very point at our annual planning conference last November, and the board was very very interested in, in being a supporting vehicle for whatever you, you need to do when it comes to hiring more police officers and especially getting them uh, to respond to the businesses as, as fast as they can. So thank you for that. Um, I want to shift over to economic development now. So this one's a fairly short question. What are you doing to make sure downtown thrives again? Well, I stated in my, uh, my presentation that our economic development division is looking at programs for the downtown so that we can get some of those buildings reopened so that they can be reutilized. Uh, there's many different things that can go into our downtown, and a lot of it is going to start with attracting 
different kinds of businesses, different kinds of um, uses for those buildings. I know that uh, Annette Taylor is already involved in programming, uh, putting together a program where we can open up some of the empty buildings. I know that the bank building is one of the first ones they're starting with, and my hope is that it will continue all the way down through to the rest of town. So one of the things I really appreciated from the chamber and from James is they asked you these questions before we got up here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so why that's important is because, you know, obviously the elected officials, they don't know what goes on in the day-to-day -day operations of the city. We have 500 some employees working for us. So even I don't. So we want to be able to give you some details. So I, I wrote some down. So first of all, the downtown is an opportunity zone. So, you know, we all talk about, wow, the Mare Island's an opportunity zone. So is downtown. So is downtown. So when people look at investing in downtown, that money's tax sheltered. Um, I want to say that, that uh, we have had some people like Cal Maritime, who's sitting here today, invest in our downtown. Let's, oh, you guys are always applauding for yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I think the mayor touched on Factory OS, but let me just say this to you. So having people live in our downtown is critically important to its success and to supporting the business community. What is being discussed is 130 units wrapped around where our ferry terminal parking garage is. Have people live there. And what happens when we see people invest in our downtown? More people invest in our downtown. So Rick's not here, but I will tell you that is a huge, uh, uh, a huge optimistic momentum builder for downtown. So let's keep going. So we're redoing our zoning ordinances. So we're re reducing the number of parking spaces required downtown. So if you own a business, obviously, we don't want to have a bunch of parking lots. We want to have lots of, of, of buildings close to each other with people walking and moving and, and, and not have it full of parking lots. We're trying to really um, ramp up our mixed use. So in other words, be more flexible with our zoning codes so that certainly we get, we, we need people living down there. We need people to invest in buildings that they're going to put more, not, not only the retail side, but apartments, living sides. Um, we talked about the council has been very, very anxious to have us move forward with an incentive program, especially for downtown. So we've initiated that process. And the bottom line to that is how do we get targeted incentives into downtown so people will redevelop their property, fix up their property, and have it occupied. And I will put a little shout out for my vice mayor, um, who is the liaison to Mr. Heemstra, now the chairman of Economic Vitality Commission. Who, wow, you gonna give Tim a hand? <laughs> no. So, so why is that important? Is because they're really starting to engage. They want to take an active role in a, in a part of economic development. And I'm hoping they've been talking about their work plan, but I'm very hopeful that they will. Uh, take over ownership of downtown revitalization. I saw two thumbs up from them. So, and, and that's important because we always want, just like the chamber did such a great job ad hoc committing with us on our streamlining process, so would a commission for economic vitality in downtown. So our eyes are zooming in on downtown. We're trying to do some things code. We're going to bring some uh, reduced fees for people wanting to develop, and we'll present that to council. But we also have a commission that's now focused, hopefully, on that as well. So a lot of movement. We're seeing uh, Bambinos come in. Again, we have somebody like Cal Maritime moving in. So we are seeing movement, and it only keeps moving from building to building. So anybody that's got a building that's vacant, if you fill it, it's going to make it one more building for an active and a, and a very exciting downtown. So just as a quick follow-up to that, um, we're talking about downtown right now, but what are the tactics that are being used to bring business to Vallejo generally? Slater, didn't you mention Slater? Where are you, Slater? <laughs> oh, he's staying in the back. So um, I'll just give a, a couple quick comments. So we really, the city council, and I will say for, for me as your city manager, economic development, job creation, and revenue for our schools, for successful businesses, for this city is key. We have to have economic development in order to grow and be healthy. 
So we have doubled the size of the Economic Development Department whose only focus is to get projects done, to reach out, talk to people who are interested and make sure they have somebody they can communicate directly with uh, it, every single day that they want to work on a project here in Vallejo. So there's a lot of outreach when it comes to uh, marketing. We've comp partnered with the Solano County EDC. As far as they go out to um, different places, they, they um, advertise or market Solano County, but we now play an active role in that. There is a very significant technology we use to make sure we get into the Bay Area and to the Bay Area businesses with what's going on here and different opportunities. I think Solano 360 is a pretty example, the old fairgrounds. So that project, we partnered with the county, and at first we sent it out for proposals, and it seemed we weren't getting much interest. So the economic development group that works for your city um, hooked into something, um, a marketing strategy that touches nationwide. So we're able to get the right kind of people who do developments the size of 150 some acres that that is, and get it right onto their computer screen. And so I am happy to say, and there'll be much more later between the county and the city, there's four proposals that we're very hopeful that we can move forward on one of them to see that part of our city develop too. So most of it has to do with marketing, it's personal connection, um, and then again, lots of touches, lots of touches into the Bay Area. We've seen 80 some articles actually written in the past year about Vallejo and, uh, and economic development and business. So we think we're getting the word out that uh, there's a lot of activity and, and, and optimism in Vallejo. But again, we're gonna keep pushing that, pushing it. So if you have something, I can tell you, call the economic development department. Their job is to work you through the process. Anything to add, Mayor? You know, I, I think Greg, uh, really, really hammered that one home. This is huge for our community. Uh, economic development is our lifeblood. It's what's gonna move Vallejo forward. And we're seeing it starting to happen all over our town. And as we move things forward, so does the quality of life. So do all the things that we as a community, that we as residents want for our town. So this is a real exciting time for Vallejo. We're seeing a lot of stuff move forward. And again, our pipeline has really just opened up. So. I'm, I'm, as a mayor, I'm really proud of what city staff is doing, what the council is approving. This is a good time for us. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna hop over to education for just one second here. State of the schools in Vallejo is not good, and an improvement in our schools is an investment in our youth, our future, and is key to attracting middle-class professional talent to Vallejo in the near term. What can the city government do to help the school district up the level of our schools? The million dollar question, it really is. Uh, we have the superintendent of schools in the audience today and we have always been in discussion with our school district about partnering, about moving things forward for our community, especially for our kids. Like I said, kids are our future and what I see happening are things like trades academies, partnerships in interns, working and tutoring young people, getting them out into jobs that are gonna be meaningful. We have a lot of good businesses that have come to Vallejo. Mare Island Dry Docks, for one. Chris and her part of her team is here today. And they've taken a lot of these young people that have had difficulties and given them jobs. She's done second, third, and fourth chances for a lot of these young people. And I'm nothing but proud of what Mare Island Dry Docks is doing. So thank you. We also have a great educational system in our town. Our junior college, CMA, and Toro University. All these are opportunities for our young people to better themselves in the educational process and also getting themselves into better paying jobs that are sustainable for not only themselves, but for families. And as we move forward in our economic development, I truly believe that one of the things we'll see is, again, better housing, but coupled with that better housing will be more schools. And with the, with the declining enrollment the way it is now, my hope is to see that we make the turn and that a lot of the young people start in our school district. I know that uh, it is a difficult time for public schools as a whole, but I truly believe that we as a community have a lot to offer 
uh, again, not only in our public school system, but in our charter schools and in our university systems. Greg, you have anything to add? I'll be, I'll be brief. So um, I will tell you that, you know, I think you've hit on all three questions are the most important issues that we have to deal with as a community. When we talk to people about recruiting them to have a job and, you know, are you going to live in the city? Well, you know, I'm concerned about the education system. I'm concerned about crime. What does the education system need? Obviously, they're looking at closing schools, funding issues. You know, you look at how do we improve after bankruptcy here as a city, their funding issues, all driven through economic development, where you really want to get the money from. Those three are right on. So I would say to you is the city council, where youth is extremely important, and I'm looking out at the council members, youth is very important, and we've got a school district with education. We have GVRD that does recreation, and uh, I've had recreation under me as a city manager before. We're kind of, that's not our core services, yet we have to do something to, to come in the middle and to work with these two partners. So the city council just approved someone to coordinate youth some, some, a youth coordinator so that we can start bridging the gap between what we see over the schools, what we see over GVRD, and how do we play a role in the middle of that as the city. And so you'll see that starting very soon. I happen to just meet today um, with the Vice Mayor and the Vallejo Education Business Alliance today. And we talked about uh, some programs, some ideas, the Vallejo Promise Initiative. So I think that's the kind of roles we can start playing is how do we support the education side because it hurts us all when it comes to the education system. So uh, stay tuned for that. We'll have a coordinator hired hopefully in the next four months. And then again, the goal is really work between the school districts, GVRD, and then we'll work with Vallejo Promise. I think that means a lot when we talk Vallejo Promise when it comes to our kids. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're getting close to the end. There's one more question in particular I, I definitely want to hear from you on, and it's an issue that I think the mayor touched on in his address, and it's the homelessness issue. Homelessness is a growing problem in the city, and it doesn't fall to any one department or person to address. What steps are the city taking to create a task force of community people and agencies to create a more unified direction to help bring resources to this problem? Excellent question, James. First and foremost, this isn't just one department working on the homeless and sheltered issues. We as a community are working on this. There are a lot of volunteers in the faith community, good people that are out just wanting to help. But it has to be coordinated. And I'm very thankful for our, our housing division, Judy Shepherd Hall and our Tim, I'll call her what her title, her our temporary housing. I'm sorry, Judy, homeless, homeless coordinator, um, Rachel Frederick VJ, who's been coordinating various programs around the community and trying to bring together those many service providers that are trying to aid our unsheltered population. You know. I also spoke about uh, a partnership that we created with our three hospitals here in Vallejo. And they've contributed $7.1 million towards a navigation center that is being built that will be off of Solano Ave, or no, I'm sorry, Sonoma Ave, Sonoma Boulevard, that will house approximately 125 people with total wraparound services. And those services will include everything from mental health to, um, narcotics issues, to substance abuse, to uh, medical problems, dental problems, to helping them find jobs for job training, job placement, and this service will be free of charge. The facilities will be patterned very similar to what San Francisco has done with their homeless outreach, and we'll be out in the community talking with the unsheltered, encouraging them to come to this, this the shelter that we're trying to place. Well, not trying, that we are. Uh, Judy and, and Rachel are doing a phenomenal job of bringing this together, and they're concentrating on the entire community of the homeless population. Sadly, the numbers are up to around 600, and we're not going to be able to, to take care of all 600, because a lot of these folks 
are not going to want service. So those that do want the service will be working with, as well as the faith community, which is present here in the room now. Our faith community has taken a lot of these folks under their wing, have given them shelter, food, clothing, and given them the services that they've needed. So we're also partnering with the county. We belong to a county task force. Uh, Supervisor Hannigan was in the audience and she chairs one of those task forces that we're, we're working with. And we are also looking for other funding through grants and um, federal funding to help with this uh, real and now problem. Greg, do you have anything you want to add? Just very briefly, um, so the council did, we did have a temporary consultant working for us on homelessness trying to coordinate that, but the council did approve again um, last meeting moving forward with a full-time position to start coordinating that. Again, that's not, we do housing, but we don't do homeless coordinate. That's a whole other activity, so we want to focus in on that. Uh, Mayor and council have asked that a work session be set up so we can really start talking about what about, you know, all these people we see in their vehicles overnight? What about, you know, moving from camp to camp? Because basically the law allows us to do one thing, and that's tell them to move, but it doesn't stop them from moving to another place, another location. So we really have to address this. I think the city's made some great steps at Navigation Center. Mostly it's just the big cities getting that, and great job by staff and by the council to actually see that happen. So in um, March or early April, we'll actually have a study session with the council. We'll kind of start going over what are our alternatives. And you know what you're starting to see in a lot of places, people creating parking lots where people can park. And so it's just how do we find a way to deal with them camping out in our backyards, along our railroad tracks, and our wetlands. Um, only thing we can do is we provide the services. We tell them, here's services, but we need you to move. A few of them take up the option on the services. Most of them just move, and then another neighborhood's impacted in that. So again, we're going to do a work session. Navigation Center is a great start, but there's more that we just absolutely have to do. It is a number one issue when we've talked to you and we did some survey, community survey, that you raised when we called you and you said homelessness is the biggest issue. And yes, it's about the person, but it's also about our quality of life. There are issues on both sides of that that we, we have to be able to address. So we'll have a coordinator, uh, the navigation center, and thirdly, this council has made it a priority and we'll have a work section here in March and April, so stay tuned for that. Thank you very much. Uh, there are a number more questions that I wish we could get to, but as I'm looking at the clock, it is just about 1.30, and I want to be mindful of everybody's time. Um, I do want to remind you there are cards on your table. If there's a question you'd like to have answered, please fill these out, leave them on your table. We'll come back and we'll pick them all up and make sure that they get them to the city. So thank you very much, Mayor and City Manager, for answering our questions today. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you very much. As we're finishing up here, I do want to uh, give you one more video before we go. again to everybody from being at the 2020 State of the City. Please get home safely. Again, thank you to Medic Ambulance, our presenting sponsors, all that were here today, all that contributed. We appreciate it. We'll see you in 2021. Take care.